The battle for 2023 continues as the People's Democratic Party, PDP, stalls its zoning decision and members of different zones express interest in running for the office. And Deputy Governor of Zamfara State, Madi Ali Uguso, fights for his position as the State House of Assembly moves to impeach him. Well, this is Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anacle. The People's Democratic Party PDP has stated that it has not yet zoned its presidential tickets to any zone of the country. The Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the party, Ibrahim Abdullahi, noted that the party has learned sufficient lessons in time past over zoning of presidential tickets, saying it will handle issues better this time. Now, the Southeast has been clamoring for Igbo presidency come 2023, but individuals from the North and South have reportedly expressed intentions to run for the same seat. However, the absence of zoning of the tickets confusion seems to uh, abound in the political part, uh, party arena as we speak. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is uh, Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Ibrahim Abdullahi. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Abdullahi. Thank you very much for having me. Interesting. Um, what exactly is the plan of the People's Democratic Party for 2023? There's, there's so much that's been happening within the party. We've seen governors, former governors coming together to galvanize um, um, the support of the National Working Committee as to a way forward uh, for the zoning um, you know, issue. But where does the PDP stand right now, being that there are calls from the Southwest, uh, the Southeast, even the South-South, uh, for the party to zone its ticket in that direction? Well, um, it is uh, what you expect in democracy, especially in a political party the size of the PDP. You have nothing less than 80% of Nigerians as members of the PDP, at least uh, the voting class, those who are conscious of democracy and those who are in the arena as Democrats, constitute over 80 percent and they are in pdp now when that is the case you are likely to have the situation that we have which is having everybody interested in buying for one office or the other especially that of the president now pdp's zoning formula has been a gentleman agreement from the incipient stage in 1998 under the military in the build-up to handing over to the democratic government in 1999 which President Obishogun Obasanjo succeeded in uh, becoming the first uh, democratically elected president after the military handed over. Now, conscious of the diverse nature of Nigeria as a heterogeneous society with people of different belief and value system, people from different zones and divide and religious uh, belief, it is only fair that you begin to think of getting people to appreciate, you know, zoning so that if you have a taste of power, you the next time hand it over to the next zone so that they can also have. That was it. It was not contained in our constitution. It is not because the mistake uh, Nigerians make often is to assume that it's a constitutional thing. No, it's a gentleman agreement to accommodate all the members of the PDP and people who will have the opportunity from other zones to test power. So if it comes to the north, it is expected the next time to go to the south on the basis of gentleman agreement. But we are getting to a stage where we are appreciating that having come this far, it is important we begin to look at the best man for the job across the divide, who come from the South, who come from the North, regardless of that agreement which we had in 1998. So in the build up to 2023, PDP is interfacing now. It's engaging all the critical stakeholders so that we will come up with informed decision as to where the presidency will be zoned to, which we will communicate to Nigerians in due course. So um, there, there are those who are of the school of thought that all of a sudden the PDP has decided to re-strategize and throw its you know, um, doors open to all zones to come and play. 
And these, these calls or these sentiments are coming from the people in the South who say, well, it's now our turn. Uh, why is the PDP deciding to ask for everybody to run for the office and may the best men win? Why was this not done initially? And some people feel that this is a targeted attempt by the PDP to rob them of their opportunity to run for these offices. What do you have to say about that? Uh, the call by the Southeast or the entire South, as it were, is not uh, misplaced. But if you are to compute the number of years that the North has held power from 1999 to this period that we are 2022, you will discover that the South has held power even more, much as we are not looking at things from that perspective. Uh, Olusha Gunobasanjo, that I told you uh, in the beginning, had uh, eight years from 1999 to 2007. He was succeeded by President Yaradwa, who was short-lived. After about two years to three years, we lost President Yaradwa, and good luck, Jonathan, another Southerner, continued until about 2015. Now, if you put this together, you will discover that the South has held on to power for an 11 or more years in the 15 years of the PDP. So if that line of argument were to be rational, the North will have more excuse than the Southerner. But that's not where we are going. We are looking at it from a perspective where having come this far, let Nigerians enjoy the benefit of producing leadership from merit, leadership from competence, leadership from capacity, leadership from ability, as opposed to doing it that gentle man agreement or gentle way agreement that we have had from you know 1998 to 2015 when PDP lost power. What we are saying is that if it so favors the South, as it were, for the ticket of the presidency, which is in the table, and we are discussing to that effect, the entire northern Nigeria and, of course, the South family of the PDP will rally behind the South to produce the next president. But as we speak, that decision is not yet um, arrived at. We are working hard to ensure that uh, we produce for Nigerians competence, uh, uh, character, capacity, and the ability to salvage them from this despair and hopelessness in the land. So this is why PDP is taking caution and applying a lot of restraint in concluding on the issue of zoning. But you rest assured that in the fullness of time, and that's not distant time from now, PDP will bring for Nigerians salvation and it will lead uh, them to the light, which is lying at the end of the time. I want to probe, I want to probe a bit further on the issue of competence and leadership and all of these things. You make it sound like, well, if you throw it open, then, I mean, there might just be one zone or a particular person that might have all of these characteristics. But isn't it true that there are these kinds of people in every zone? And when you're talking about competence, there are competent people in the north. There are competent people in the south. There's, there are also competent people in the north central and the south. So really, when we talk about these things, it makes it look like somebody is just going to emerge that has all of these characteristics. But we do have these people. So again, what is the modus operandi or how are you strategically going to pick these persons that you term as well um, vasted or um, capacitated with this in this kind of leadership qualities. I mean, I'm sure that every zone can produce those people, but then it boils down to something else, doesn't it? And what is that something? In democracy and in constitutional democracy, like the one we practice, it is only natural that you allow people exercise their freedom of fundamentals. And that is what is happening around the PDP, appreciating that every person is entitled under the law to try. But again, we have come so far with the zoning formula. Having attained this height and democracy today, our democracy is not uh, nascent relatively. It has come over 20 years and we are beginning to appreciate that it is time that we allow the best to come out of the system. If we narrow it to zone continuously, for how long are we going to allow the opportunity? And don't forget, democracy is about contest of ideas. Just when you are thinking one zone is good, another zone will tell you that they are better. And that's why I'm asking, should we base this only on competence? Because again, it makes me think for it makes me think that maybe the PDP before now never ever at any point thought about the issue of competence and true leadership qualities. You just probably gave a flag bearer that ticket 
based on sentiments of zoning. That's what it sounds like, except you can correct me. You see, what is important to appreciate in democracy is that it's an evolving thing. It continues to evolve over time. And for us to advance the frontiers of democracy, we grow to be um, a formidable structure where uh, the peculiarities of the uh, uh, concept of democracy will be open to everybody that is involved in the system. In 1998 and in, at the formation of the PDP, much of what you are talking about were not factors that were considered. So we were trying to, it was a nascent democracy as it were, we were trying to raise it to a level where we seem to have attained now. Therefore, if you have to do it the wise way, is to allow everybody to try. And don't forget one thing, Anywhere throughout the globe, democracy is about majority, it's about number. It is a contest for the majority, for them to have their way, and the minority will have a say. Mm -hmm. We are not looking at the South as a minority, no. But what we are trying to say is to aggregate where the electoral fortune will come. If the North, for example, will give us the opportunity to produce the presidency, uh, as opposed to the South, why not? But if the South will have that opportunity for us, why not the South? What we are trying to do now is to leave the whole thing open to the system itself and to Nigerians for them to see if after evaluating all the factors available for us at the table, and we are analyzing them every bit of the way, we will come back to Nigerians and tell them that these are the options that are open to us. If Nigerians prefer democracy, I mean, uh, PDP back in power, which I have no doubt they do, then they will have to go with us at the decision. We are not saying the South will not have it. We are not saying the North is having it already. We are not also saying the North cannot have it. What we are trying to do now is to evaluate the options that are open, that will advance our electoral fortune. We are aggregating the ideas and the views of Nigerians and come up with informed decision, which will be let out for the consumption of Nigerians at the fullness of time. So the haste with which the South is asking for this is a uh, misplaced, if you ask me. I don't have a problem with that, but what I'm saying is that no need for the apprehension. The right thing will be done under an informed and decisive leadership, like I have always said, mm. led by Senator Dr. Iochi Ayu and the National Working Committee. These are seasoned technocrats and democrats, people who have carved niches for themselves. They know what democracy is about. What is important is the advantage of the PDP, winning election and salvaging Nigerians from despair and despondency, which seem to have pervaded the land. If you ask me, that is the way to go. But the PDP is looking at the options available on the table, and they are weighing it. Mm. And we shall get back to Nigerians in due course. Let's talk about um, a statement that was credited to a PDP leader in the South. Uh, and I'd like to quote him. Um, although he said this under conditions of anonymity, uh, he said the zoning of the presidency seems not to be having a headway as governors want to dictate the process. So I'll put that question to you. What exactly do you think that the governors are trying to achieve here if they be not working in tandem with uh, the leadership of the party and maybe they want something else? What do you think they're driving at? Well, I, I'm not sure the leader in the Southwest who spoke about that issue was quoted rightly. But supposing he was uh, reported to have said that, uh, what I expect Nigerians to understand and appreciate is that we have in place governors today as uh, chief security officers of their state and are the people that are holding the fortune of the PDP. 13 of them are the custodians of the party before the National Working Committee came on board. What we're trying to do is to ensure as critical stakeholders and as people that are uh, driving you know, affairs in their respective states, they are consulted. You wouldn't expect in a democracy a sitting governor not to have a say in an issue but certainly they will not be the ones to dictate one piece not under a senator uh dr Iyoche Ayu, who was the former senate president of the federal republic who became a phd at the uh, as far back as uh, 1984 he's been in the academy um, academia and he left there and joined politics in no distant time he became the senate president and after that he was a founding member of this party i'm not sure there's any governor sitting in the pdp who was there when PDP was conceived in 1998. But the Oche Ayu was, and is about one of the three surviving members of uh, the first, you know, 18 and later 13 people that formed the PDP. Uh, the, the other two, Asule Lamido and uh, uh, Jerry Gana. So you don't expect anyone to come out there 
an intimidate uh, Professor uh, I mean, uh, Yoche Ayu. In any case, he was a minister, a member of the cabinet, at least four times uh, in different government, minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He's coming with rich pedigree and political like, capital. He has his deputy in the south and the person of Taufik uh, uh, Arapaja. This was another uh, deputy governor, a former member of the National Assembly, a former ambassador of the Federal Republic. I mean, uh, his, uh, uh, ambassador of the Federal Republic. I mean, uh, represented Nigeria. So these are people who have a niche. If you come to the north here, yeah, the deputy uh, national chairman was uh, an ambassador as well, and he's aspired for governor in his home state of Yobe. The same thing applies to 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 the national secretary. He was a senator of the Federal Republic. He also aspired for governor of Imo State. And the same thing with the National uh, uh, Organizing Secretary, a member of the National Assembly, a former commissioner from his state, and of course, a uh, 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 former military officer. And there are so many of them, the list goes on. We cannot tell you the quality of presence. We can't be able to tell you how many uh, uh, quality persons we have there. There are too many, the 21 members of the National Working Committee are people who have stamped their feet on the sands of time and will continue to assert relevance in the annals of history in Nigerian politics. So they cannot be intimidated by the governor. We are trying, I mean, governors, we're trying to do things the right way. We are bidding time. We are discussing with them. They are not the only ones. Only yesterday we had meeting, uh, dinner meeting with the National Assembly caucus of the Senate. And we talked about wide range of issues. They are critical stakeholders in the project. These are people that must be consulted so that we we'll arrive at a page in the fullness of time. We will meet former ministers of the PDP in due course. We will meet the House of Representative Caucus. We will meet everyone that matters. So meeting the governors and interfacing with them is only to advance the frontiers of the PDP so that we will aggregate what are their misgivings in their respective states, what are their suggestions on ways to advance you know, the course. That's essentially it, nothing more. And all of, in all of these strategies, which I, I, I mean, I'm not in any way trying to, you know, put it down, but we also realize that the PDP has one way or the other become somewhat of a minority party, and some would say that it has become a southern party of sorts. Um, I mean, left for one or two that are sprinkled around. But um, in, in looking at the governors, what about the states that have been taken from you? For example, Cross River, um, for example, Zamfara. I mean, in Zamfara, it's a a boiling kettle as we see the deputy governor and the governor go head uh, head to head. Uh, what is the PDP doing? I mean, we see the opposition going about trying to do some form of um, reconciliation across, you know, their different states. What is the PDP doing? Because you also need the numbers to be able to rescue Nigeria, in your words. But is there any plan, any strategy in ca recapturing those states? And how do you do it? Uh, with all of these uh, other states that are in limbo? You can see the reason why the caution that I talked about earlier is necessary. If we do not have uh, people who appreciate what democracy is about, like the case of Cross River, you cited, and Zamfara, where the Supreme Court was the one that um, uh, handed over justifiably though, uh, power to the governor who later migrated back to the you know, APC. If you do not have people who understand, who have dexterity, who have quality, who appreciate what, you know, uh, democracy is about, you will be missing the link because you will be handing over power to people or supporting people who do not necessarily understand what uh, the mandate of people uh, is to them. You give a person the opportunity to contest on the platform and he becomes a governor. The next thing you hear is the person taking your victory. The victory was not his in the first place. This person takes the victory and migrates to another party. It's only in this climb where you have this sort of nonsense. But what the PDP is doing in the meantime is to ensure that we consult widely. The deputy governor is in charge of uh, PDP in the state. We are aware of the impeachment that has been initiated against him. But the majority of Nigerians who are the electorate from Zamfara State, the citizens of Zamfara State, are behind the deputy governor, and we are trying to put the house in order. You needed to hear what uh, Senator Marafa and the former governor of the state, who is an APC and a, uh, contesting for national chairman of their, that party, is talking now about the PDP. They are all coming back to the PDP, and we are talking with them. We will strengthen the party in Zamfara so that we will go to the poll in 2023 stronger than we have always been. 
rest assured, PDP will have no reason what to fear whether that, the What does it guarantee that that will play out the way you want to? I know that you're not here to tell me what if. You're, you're, you're going to sound very positive because you want it to turn out well. But then there is a House of Assembly that is major, majorly APC, and the impeachment process has started. Who's to say that there is anything that would swing that vote in favor of Deputy Governor Gusau? You see, it doesn't matter, even if it goes their way, which is what we foresee. It doesn't matter. What about the electorate? This is um, a hurricane that has come to rob the PDP. These people don't even win election anywhere. What they just do is to coerce the people. They intimidate people from the opposing party, whether in government or not, by getting them or luring them. What they go is they go poaching, you know, the members of the PDP back into their fold because they have not been able to perform. So they will intimidate using an instrument of coercion and state might to intimidate uh, members into their party. And this has been what we have seen since uh, uh, 2015. Tell me one governor that is outstanding today in the entire APC. Don't talk about the president who has visited Nigeria with despair and despondency. And, and, uh, before Buhari became president, Nigerians thought he was the messiah. Today, Nigeria has been taken back to the doldrums. We don't even want to talk about the hopelessness that has pervaded the land. Look at the economy, the educational sector, public utility, morality, security and international relations of Nigeria are all in a malady. And these are multidimensional problems that require multidimensional solutions. But there are some but this Nigerians who would also say the same about the PDP administration that has you know, run this country for at least 16 years. They could say the same thing. Uh, and that's the reason I'm why they hope. voted the APC government into power. And I'm not here to speak for the APC, but I'm just saying there are those who would say, well, the PDP didn't do any better. Hence the reason why the mm -hmm. APC is here doing whatever you're saying Nigerian, that they're doing. As a, Nigerian, as a Nigerian that you are, you don't have to speak for the APC. Today, I understand we go to the same market with you. We travel around the same space in Nigeria with you. If the space is as secured as it was in 2015, I leave you with that judgment. If the market that we go to buy goods today, if the price and the exchange rate of Nigeria and even the social peace that Nigeria enjoys as a territory, is the same with what you obtained in 2015. It's up to you to judge. There's no Nigerian out there. Whatever they say, politics aside, these people have, have succeeded in taking Nigeria 200 years backward. We have seen how uh, the entire you know, political firmament has become something different from what we had. The freedom of the press, the social peace that Nigeria enjoyed, waver. where are all of this? Now, whatever APC says in the build-up to 2023 is up to Nigerians. If PDP was voted out because there were uh, forms of uh, misgovernance in the, its 16 years, now in eight years, the atrocities that have been visited on Nigerians surpasses the eight, 16 years of the PDP. In fact, there's no basis for comparison or judgment. Okay. So what is anyone telling us? We are watching, and Nigerians everywhere. I just came back from Kebi State, my home state where local government elections held. In virtually all the 21 local governments and about 225 words, not 10,000 votes was generated by the APC in a state of over 6 million people. But the PDP won throughout. But what happened? They announced themselves. In fact, they've not even gone to most of the polling units to compute the votes or to announce. The electoral officers found their way out because the state electoral uh, commission is controlled by by the state so what is apc they've lost hope they brought nigeria into a sorry state in despair in despondency in hopelessness nigerians have lost complete hope in apc there's nothing good to say about the apc i am even ashamed for for for, for president buhari in particular at his age and at his level you know of accomplishment in nigeria he will promise what he cannot look at what they do their government in their in the campaign the 2015 election security anti-corruption and uh, uh uh i'm sorry we have to go time is not on our side but i want to say thank you um ibrahim abdullahi is the deputy national publicity secretary of the people's democratic party and i appreciate you for being part of the conversation well thank you so much well thank you all for staying with us we'll take a short break now and when we return we discuss the troubles uh in zamfara state of course the deputy governor has been served an impeachment letter 
by the House of Assembly. Stay tuned, we'll talk about it after this break. <laughs>